paradias masha prepa saitama vesa ila prefe nosatia let the hunger let the ones that are hungry let them be filled let the ones that are thirsty to be filled maso prepai kasola je prombalia and the bible said that jesus cried out he said on that great day let him the hunger let it the thirst come and let them receive let no one go back the same let us receive from you Today, Holy Spirit, maso prepaya dose kaya, shabo sepe mangela koske berede. Let there be answers of prayers. Let la masko beri savias lembre paka yete. Let there be manifestations. Mashata, let us be satisfied in the name of Jesus. Let the maso preparo sete jaira moverias. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul, only you can satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Let's sing one more time, only you, only you can satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul, satisfy my soul, only you can satisfy, only you can satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul, satisfy, satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy, only you can satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul, satisfy my ah, soul. Only you can satisfy, only you can satisfy, satisfy us today, Holy Spirit. Let no one go back the same, let there be transformation. Oh my, I know. Let there be answers in the name of Jesus. Yes, only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Let that burden be removed. Let that pain dissipate in the name of Jesus. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy. Satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul. Maleko parasila, sare bo feras ke ferosatia. Can we ask him to satisfy us today? Lekombre kaya, can we ask him to satisfy us? Church should not be the place you come and go back the same. Something must change. Something must transform. Something must change about you. Something must change about that situation. Something must change about that circumstance. Something must change about that pain. Something must change about that family member. Something must change about that sickness. Satisfy us, O oh God. Satisfy us, Holy Spirit. I come and no grace to be my kaitana. Ele bronde le be kaito senta. My so preta kaya to. That pain that is in that heart. Satisfy us. E go bada. Jebo sete. You are the Spirit of Truth. Reveal the truth to us concerning situations, concerning circumstances. That thing that is concerning in our heart, satisfy us by your power in the name of Jesus. Masukai dos subelida, reko sai pai dos pepe dos kata. Let no heart go back in pain. Let the joy of the Lord envelop us. Grant us your rest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Satisfy us in this service. And everyone that is online, even those that will watch this later on, let them experience your glory, O oh God. 
In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands as we worship him. As we worship the Lord of Lords this morning. As we lift up our King. He's our help. He's our strength. He's our shield. He's our healer. I want us to just worship him. Father, we worship you. Uh, Father, we bless your name. We echo what heaven is doing right now. The Bible says, uh, day and night, they're just, the, the elders, they bow before him. They bow before God Almighty. They bow before God, majesty, and that is what we're doing this morning. I want us to understand that we are worshiping the majesty. We are worshiping the audience of one, the one who was, the one who is. The Bible says, in the beginning, Elohim. Uh, in the beginning, Elohim was already there. <laughs> he said, I am the begin. I am the beginning, I am the end. Uh, he is a limitless God. Uh, uh, we are worshiping the Elohim, uh, the one who made the heaven and the earth. I want you to think back for a second. See how big this heaven is. Uh, that you can't even see the end of it. Uh, see how vast the earth is. Uh, that is the God that you and I are serving. Uh, that is the God that we are worshiping this morning. Uh, you see he is majesty. Uh, his name is glorious. Uh, his name is excellent. Uh, we are worshiping God almighty. Uh, we are worshiping our father and our the Bible says that we have not received the spirit of bondage against the fear, but we have received the spirit of sonship whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. That's what we're coming to do. When you worship, it is an opportunity for you to open up your heart. It is an opportunity for you to pour out your heart. It is an opportunity for you all to open up to Abba, your Father, your Daddy. Come and worship Him. Come and say something to Him. You're not waiting for me to hype you. You're not waiting for us to do nothing. You open up your mouth and appreciate your Father and give Him the glory. The Bible says He inhabits the praises of His people. Come and have somebody who can worship Him. Come and give Him praise. Come and give Him the glory.
This is for you. The praise and the worship. Whatever it is, Father, it is for you. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence to worship you. 
Father, we ask that you receive our praises. You'll receive our worship. We ask that for the spirit of heaviness, that you will give us a spirit of joy, the spirit of our gladness in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we, we wait on you and we lean absolutely on you. In Jesus' precious name we worship. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Well, welcome, welcome, amen, into God's presence, hallelujah. How many of you are excited to be alive today? Amen. How many of you are thankful? I hope you understand that not everyone who went to bed actually woke up this morning. I hope you understand that. So sometimes when we tell people, come praise God, you're like, oh, if you understand that some people, you heard of what happened on the Baltimore Bridge, right? This was just overnight of last week. Some people actually were driving and some horrible demon possessed sheep or some sort or I don't even know what to say, hit the bridge. And it's not like we don't pass that bridge. I don't know about you, but you know that I get on that bridge. So it could have been me. Who knows? We don't know. The people who died, are they so wicked that they died? I hope you understand that it is God. So when we say praise God, please praise God. The Bible says that everything that has bread, do what? Praise God. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. Amen. Forget about what God didn't do. Forget about what you're waiting for. Forget about the ton, the long list that you're looking on to God for. Amen. And just praise him anyhow. Amen. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Come on, let's go. This is a really easy song. It's an old song, but it's a good song. Let's go. Father, we worship you. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. Come on, are you ready? Father, we praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey. Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you ready? We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody in the room sing. Our hands and give him glory. We've come, we've come. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Come on, we've come to lift our hands. We've come to lift our come on, hands hey. and give him glory. Oh, we come, we've come, we've yeah. Come to lift our hands and give him praise. We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come, we've come. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Come on, we've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Come on, we've come to lift our hands and give him glory. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, are you ready? We come to clap our hands and stand up to the hey. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. Everybody in the room sing. We come to clap our hands and stand up to the We come, we've come. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Listen, hey. We've come to clap our hands and stand up to the hey. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. Come on, we come to clap our hands and send up Judah. Come on, he's a lion of the trouble, Judah. We come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We've come to clap our hands, yeah. We come to clap our hands. We come to send up Judah. We come to clap our hands. Clap our hands and give him praise. Say, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. We come to clap our hands. you're worthy. Father, we bless your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, are you ready? Hey, we come to do our dance and magnify him. Hey, we come to do our dance and give him praise. Hey, we come to do our dance and magnify him. Come on, do your dance. We come to do 
our dance and give him praise. We come to do our dance. We come to do our dance. We come to magnify him. Come on. Is he worthy to be praised? Come on and give your dance. I give him praise. Are you ready? Come on. Is he worthy? Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Come on. Are you ready to give him the highest praise? Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey. Give him the highest praise. your holy name hallelujah come on if you don't lose it in God's presence where do you want to lose it if you're not going to loosen up in God's presence where do you want to loosen up father we bless your name father we bless your name father we bless your name you see when we do what we do we do it by faith it's not because we have our ducks in a row but we do it by faith knowing that God is not unjust or unfaithful he will not forget your labor of love. He will not forget your diligence. And so when you do it, do it by faith. Oh Lord, my Lord, how excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power, a strong tower makes me safe. Oh Lord, my Lord, how excellent is your name. Your name is red. Your name is my a strong tower makes us safe. Sing with me, say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, how Lord, how excellent, how excellent is your name, is your name, 
Your name is strength. Your name is strength. Your name is power. Your name is power. A strong tower. A strong tower makes us safe. Makes us safe. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, say, oh Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Say, how excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? Your name is strength. Your name is strength. Your name is power. Your name is power. Say a strong tower. A strong tower makes me shake. And we're crying, Lord. No. Jesus, nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Say, oh, oh, oh. 
here the same. Jesus, let us not leave here the same. Holy Spirit, breathe upon us. Touch our lives. Touch our hearts. Father, no man can do this. Only you can. Give us a word that will transform us. A word that the devil will not be able to gainsay. A word that the enemy will not be able to gainsay. A word that we ourselves will not be able to doubt. Father, Lord, we, we thank you for your presence. We thank you because we will not leave here the same. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name we worship. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, if you're clapping for him, yes, he deserves it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you're welcome into God's presence. Amen. Come on and have your seat. Amen. Time is far gone. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to welcome those who are watching us for the first time. If this is your first time, this is Grace World Church. We are in Burtonsville, Maryland. And we want to invite you specially to be part of our worship and teaching experience. Amen. Every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't sit at home. Home is good, but we're, we're done with home. Amen. Don't sit and say, I'm just going to know God for myself. No, you can't know God for yourself. There's a reason why the Bible says we should not forsake the gathering of believers. Amen. You sharpen one another when we gather together. So we want to invite you to come on board. And for those who are here and those who are watching, uh, worshiping with us for the first time, we want to welcome you. Amen. You're welcome to Grace World Church. Hallelujah. Come on and smile. Amen. You are in the presence of your Father. No one died. Thank God, right? So let's smile. And be, amen. Yes. If you want to praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we give you praise. So we're going to take a few announcements and I will be out of your way. Thank you. So for those who are watching online, that information is running across your screen. You can leave us in line. You can contact us. You can text us on the number that is scrolling across your screen. Amen. And we'll be more than happy to reach back out to you. All right. Every Thursday at 6 a.m., 6 a.m., we have Prophetic Encounter. We want to apologize, uh, you know, um, for the Thursday. We didn't have a broadcast, and we didn't actually send out a notice early enough. So we do apologize for that. But hopefully um, Thursday, we should be able to resume Prophetic Encounter. Yes, that should be on your screen right now. 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Join us through Facebook and YouTube uh, using the handles that you see on your screen. And for those who are not able to join when the um, live streaming is happening, you could go back and actually watch a replay um, and you will be blessed. And it's not a cliche, you will be blessed. Um, prophetic encounter is a time that we set aside for the Holy Spirit. You know, on a Sunday service like this, as you see, we're not able to forever worship, right? Because it's time constraint. Um, people have to go back home. People have to go to work and all those different things. But prophetic encounter, you know, we give room for the um, Lord to move in the supernatural through the prophetic. Um, that's just one dimension. There's so many dimensions of God, but that's just one dimension. Um, you know, prayerfully at some point, you know, we'll see what God wants to do with prophetic encounter. But for now, please join and watch the replay and also invite others too. And you will be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Every Saturday at 12 p.m. Central Time, and that's 1 p.m. Eastern, we have our um, outreach service in Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. Again, like I always say, we do call it Nashville, Tennessee Outreach. But if you work on Sundays and you're not able to make it, you can also join. Um, or if you know anyone in that area that you want to invite, invite people. Amen. You never can tell what one word will do for someone else. So invite people. Amen. You know, we were saying, I think I was saying two weeks ago, I said, um, sometimes we're used to our own, Lord, I want you to do this for me. Lord, I want you to do that for me. And I asked us a question, if those, those were on site, I said, if someone died and they didn't know Jesus, that means forever, eternity, they're gone, right? This was two weeks ago. And last week we heard people die. So my question is, who knows whether everyone or someone, those who probably died, who knows if they actually heard about Jesus? You know, so we are going to be the hands and feet. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. And so when we say, don't get complacent with 
I just come to church on Sunday, you know, I'm okay, I'm set for the day, I'm encouraged. Think about other people in your own network, amen. Think about people, Jesus still cares for souls. And so if you're able to invite people or you're able to send out a word of encouragement or you're able to pray for someone, that goes a long way. So I'm just saying it to encourage us to go back to our basics, amen. Invite people, invite people. You invite them and pray for them. That's all you owe them. And let's see what the Lord will do. Amen. Every Sunday at 10.30 a.m., as I mentioned before, we have our worship and teaching services, um, as you see, if you've been part of it. So we want to invite you, if you are in the DMV area, that's D.C., Maryland, Virginia, and even Delaware, uh, or even you, you are coming out and be blessed. Amen. Be blessed. Be open and see what God will do in your life. Amen. All right, I think that's about the announcement. So uh, commanding your month starts back again tomorrow. So um, for those who are watching us for the first time, if you don't know what commanding your month is, it is a time we set aside first, second, and third of every new month. Amen. First, second, and third every new month. We pray into the month. Amen. It's super important. We cannot over pray. There's never a side effect or a negative side effect of praying too much. You, you know, so let's pray. So we hear pray, pray, pray. This is all we have. This is one of the foundations of a believer. You got to pray. If there was a time that you didn't pray, this is not the time for that. The Bible says there will be perilous times. There are perilous times ahead. There are dangerous times ahead. And you have to be prayed up. Even our young people, we got to pray. The teenagers, the young people, for those who are young enough to pray in tongues, let's encourage them to pray. And you, matter of fact, pray. So we want to invite you. That information is on your screen right now. Join us via Zoom tomorrow, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, 7 p.m., 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, and the Lord will bless you. Tonight as well, we also have midnight prayer. So if you have been hearing me, you will hear that we are a church that believes in prayer. Amen. That's one of the things we believe in. We believe in prayer. We believe in the prophetic. We believe in the word. We believe in worship. Those are the things that tie us down as believers. And so tonight, join us one hour, just one hour. All we're doing is praying in tongues. We're not taking any requests. Just pray in tongues and just declare, amen, and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. I think that's all the announcements. All right, we'll take our tithes and offering. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is why it's good to have a teleprompter. All right, so a oh, person, teleprompter person. All right, so every Tuesday we start a Bible study. Amen. We want to encourage you. Again, the Bible says that we should desire the sincere milk of the word so that we will grow thereby. Another transition says you should crave the pure milk of the word so that you will grow into the full experience of salvation full experience of salvation if last year you are still memorizing one verse not to make anyone feel bad and this year you still one verse you gotta grow that's the way it is it says we'll grow into the full experience of salvation and so we want to encourage you be part of bible study it's via zoom just sit at the comfort of your home i mean that's super convenient just sit and listen to god's word let it refresh you and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. I think that's it for the announcement. Thank you very much. All right, so without much delay, we're going to take our tithes and our offering. We want to thank God for those who have been supporting our ministry. We give God, we give God praise for your life. And as we said, everything that we give, you give, um, there, is also, there is always a accountability behind it. And also, we give what we call tithe of tithes, which is we take what you give here, a tenth of it we send to people who have higher graces than we do. And I want you to know, don't be wary in well-doing. Yes, sometimes you give and you're like, oh, when will I see this? Understand that the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. If you um, keep doing what you're doing and you faint not, you will reap a harvest. That's the God that you serve. Uh, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not a, a salesperson or marketing person. So someone says, oh, you have sweet mouth. No, I'm saying what it is. That's the principle of God's word and it will not be broken. Amen. And so we want to thank God for those who are given. And if you are given through Cash App, it's dollar sign Grace World 7. If you're given through Zelle, it's support at graceworld.info. I want to give us a few minutes and lift it up to heaven. Lift up whatever it is that you're given to heaven. I want you to make a declaration over it. Because the Bible says that you will decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Amen. And so you know what it is that you desire. We have received the spirit not of fear. But we've received the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry out, Abba, Father. That means my daddy. So whatever it is that is on your heart, I want you to know that you have a daddy. And I want you to really pour out your heart to him. And understand that he who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
Let's take two minutes to do that, and I'll, 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 I'll wrap us up as we get ready for the word. Father, we're so thankful. We're thankful for the opportunity to come into your presence. Jesus, your people have come to you to give and to sow. Father, you said that uh, reaping, uh, uh, sowing and reaping is something that will always be. That's a principle that you have put in place. Father, even as your people are sowing, let there be a bountiful harvest. Your word says your blessing makes rich. Your blessing makes rich and adds no sorrow. Father, release your blessing onto these ones, Father, this morning. Let there be bountiful harvest, a joyful harvest, a peaceful harvest, such that the devil will not be able to gainsay. Testimonies that even when we don't give it, will tell themselves. Father, we thank you. We bless every single hand that has given. We bless every single heart. Father, Lord, when you bless us, no one can curse us. And so, Father, let your blessing erase every curse. Let it remove every pain. Let it remove every affliction and infirmity. Father, let your blessing be released unto us and our bloodline. Let the seed make room where there seems to be no room. Let the seed speak for us where we can't even speak for ourselves. Let the seed open doors to nations unto us. Let it open uncommon doors. Let it break the ground that seems hard. And Father, Lord, let us be able to come and give you all the praise and all the glory. We receive celebration. We receive joy. We receive gladness. We receive peace. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everyone here once again. God bless you. Amen. Good to see your beautiful faces, handsome faces once again. Last week I was not here. Um, I was in Chicago for a conference. It was wonderful. Um, the man of God that is coming in uh, May. By the way, we have a May program. It's our major program um, happening in May, May 10th to May 12th. Please don't miss it. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be power-packed. We're trusting God for unusual things to happen this year. It's the year of our turnaround. We're expecting that the anointing that we are inviting, the grace of God that we're inviting, um, that is coming, will be a blessing to every one of us here by the grace of God. And no one will go back the same. So people are coming out of town. Uh, folks in Nashville, some of them already said they're coming. Um, uh, somebody I know is coming from North Carolina. I don't know about others too. They might be coming too. So please be ready, be expectant. And I know that by the grace of God, our lives will not remain the same. Also, I want to quickly announce that I, I wish I'd sent this earlier uh, so that they can show it on the screen. There's a, a program that is coming up that I'm a part of, a group that is called Men in Christ. Somebody say Men in Christ. Men in Christ. And so um, the program is coming up on the 20th of April. And um, it's going to be a wonderful program. Um, I'm inviting all the men here. All the men in my life I'm inviting already um, so that they can be part of it. I am going to be speaking there with my friends and brothers, Pastor Mbaseki. He's been here to minister before. We had, uh, we've listened to him. Wonderful, wonderful. Pastor Nee Adams. And also, my good friend Jumbo will all be ministering together at that program. The address is 7035 Arundel Mills Circle, Hanover, Maryland, 21076. Okay? So, it's a breakfast uh, meeting. It's a breakfast meeting. It's going to start at 9. Okay, thank you. Finally. <laughs> so, it's going to start at 9 and uh, we'll end at 11. Just two hours two hours in God's presence. We don't want to talk about matters that pertain to men. You know, you know, we have a lot of women meetings, women group and all that. And men generally, they don't say much. But you see, there are a lot of things 
when a woman says 10 things. The man will hardly say one. But it doesn't mean there are no things. In fact, it is the reason I've taught us before here that the reason why our engines are slow is because we are thinking big. Are you understanding me? And that bigness, most of the time, it weighs us down. But you see, we can't tell. We can't share it because we have been taught to do what? Internalize things. And it's not supposed to be so. So, this is an avenue where we can meet and open up and express concerns, pains. I'm sure that there's some men will cry. Not because somebody has told them to kneel down and raise their hand up. Or do frog jump. No. It is because there are pains that are inside that must be expressed. And people are wondering, why are women living longer? Some of the reasons why they are living longer is because the woman is expressive. She's allowing what is inside to come out. Meanwhile, the man is keeping his own. And that one that is keeping is eating him up. Are you, are you guys understanding me? I'm not saying that's the whole reason. <laughs> But I'm just saying it's one of the reasons that you must express yourself as a man. See, God has created you and as an expressive being. I know that we do a lot of thinking. I know that we internalize things a lot. But it's also good to express, to say some things. Okay, not to the wrong people though, to the right people. Okay, so it's a program that will be powerful. That's coming up April 20th. Please, if you know any... Um, man in your life, invite them for this program. It's going to be a blessing. God is going to use us. And it, it's not going to be the only one. We are going to be holding it, you know, depending on how we look at things. We're going to be holding another one again by the grace of God before the end of this year. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So we talked, I, I'm hoping by the grace of God that, uh, you know, the series that just ended, um, Understanding Our Work with the Holy Spirit, We've learned a lot from it. It's been a blessing. Trusting God that there's something that you begin to do in terms of practicing and walking um, in terms of your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Today we're starting a new series. And it's in line with what you guys heard last week. You know, with regards to the names of God. But with a different twist. The title is, if you're writing, Dealing with Anxiety, Fear, and Depression. Dealing with anxiety, comma, fear, and depression. Dealing with anxiety, fear, and depression. One of the reasons why it's important for us to talk about this is because we have seen a rise of the issue of anxiety in the last decade. A rise of the issue of depression. A rise of the issue of people being hurt deeply that were in the past not really expressed, not because they were not there, but you know, we didn't quite see it. But now it's in the forefront that we are now talking about mental illness. Thank God there are people who are in the medical field here that can help us too. And now, by the way, before I go forward, I want to also say thank God for the doctors, for the nurses, for, for, for psychiatrists, for the medical personnel. They are doing their best. And it is God that has given them that understanding to help us. Okay? And so, we support that by the grace of God. But you see, in the final analysis, the one who can really help to deliver and to set you free is the one that I want to bring to you. And is the one that I want to talk to you about. Okay? Because you see, at the end of the day, some of those things don't actually work the way they are supposed to work. And so, you are supposed to go to the one who has all the answers. Those days while we're growing up, you, you, my, my father used to have one of the banners that says, Jesus is the answer. <laughs> there is no problem. There is no situation. There is no circumstance. There is no pain that Jesus cannot heal. Matter of fact, the Bible said Jesus carried our pains. He was a man of sorrow. So if you are talking about depression, Jesus carried it. He was beaten. He was disgraced. He was embarrassed, both physically and spiritually. So, he understands, and that's why the Bible says, he said, you do not have a high priest that is not felt with the, the feelings of your infirmity. He knows it. 
And so I want to bring to you the dimension of God. What has he said? What does he want to do concerning that pain that you are going through? Concerning that situation? Somebody might feel, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm not depressed and all that. When I begin to say some of these symptoms, you will find out. And I want to say this. It's not something to be shameful about. Neither is it something that you must shame somebody and say, oh, why, why are you the... No, 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 no. Is somebody understanding me? The church is a place of love. The church is the hospital. The church is the place of Christ where he wants to bring healing to everyone. So it's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to now shame somebody over because you heard them share their testimony or you heard them say something or you saw them crying at some point and you felt, well, why is that person doing that? You should be a man or you should be a woman. No, 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 no. Is a place of healing. Are you understanding me? So, if you hear somebody say something, be, go to them, encourage them. That's not the time to feel as if, well, why is this person behaving this way? No. Because this is the will of God for us. And, and these are the things um, that I will share briefly. But before I go into those things, I want to share from what, you know, the people in the medical field have told us. So, I'm going to share some statistics. Not to scare us, but to uh, let us know and understand. And that's why I said when anybody approaches you or when you hear people say certain things as I read these things, you will know how to address them from the standpoint of the Word of God. Alright, I'm going to read some things very briefly and fast from CDC. Okay, we know what CDC is, right? Okay, Center for what? Disease and Harm. Alright, and from the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. I'm, I just got some statistics. I, I did a lot, but these two are the ones that I just pulled out. But there were a lot that I was studying. I'm not an expert in that area, in that field, but I'm an expert in what the Word of God says. So I'm going to use the Word of God to address it. And the Word works. Amen? <laughs> the spiritual works. Amen? All right. So, mental illness are among the most common health conditions in the United States. How bad is it? Let me show you. It said, more than one in five adults live with mental illness. My God, more than one in five adults live with, not just in and out, live with mental illness. I mean, this is so serious. When I was studying this, I remember, I don't know, did you come to the cookout many years ago? Okay, okay, I think you, something happened, you couldn't make it. All right. I, I think my daughter was there, my wife was there many years ago. We went for, there's a place where I play soccer. Um, until the Lord put in my heart to stop, I used to go there. And I think your husband too used to, to come there too. I invited him. So, um, one time I decided, okay, let's have a cookout. I want to talk to the people about the love of God, about dealing with these kinds of things. And healing. And so, during the cookout, you know, after playing soccer, everybody were eating. So, I started talking. And talking, people paid attention. And after we were done, a young man that I know was a Muslim, he called me to the side. He said, Pastor, do you know what you are talking about? I said, yes, of course. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm very aware of it. He said, Pastor, this thing you are talking about is so big. He said, I want to encourage you. He said, I know I'm a Muslim. He said, but I want to encourage you. What you are doing is huge. I was like, why so? He said, Pastor, say, I have been depressed before. He said, Pastor, you know how bad it was. And, and if you see this young man, handsome looking, doing well, married with children, doing very well. He said, but Pastor, he said, don't let this fool you. He said, it got so bad that he, he went to go look for a place where he will hang himself and nobody will find him. I was like, what? You? He said, Pastor, don't let the... He said, a lot of people, they, they are suffering this thing. He said, but they won't tell you. I was like, I can't believe it. Oh, he said, Pastor. He said, why? He said, I said, so what was... He said, because his father died and that affected him. So, you see here 
that he could be anything. Grieving his father has brought him to the place of depression. Now, you might not understand that. Maybe your own father passed and that didn't happen to you. It doesn't mean it cannot happen to somebody else. Depending on what is going on in their life at that time. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? And if you see this individual that I'm talking about, even today, you never believe. So I asked him, I said, what will have happened to your wife and your children? I said, well, he was ready to end it. Are you understanding me? So this is a serious case. Like I said, these statistics, they are not to scare you, but to make you aware. And we are going to use the word of God and what God has described or, or prescribed, sorry, to deal with these issues. The Bible has not left us in the dark. The Bible has not said, well, this matter won't touch it. No, no, no. We are going to look at it together from the scriptures. What the Lord has said and by the help of the Holy Spirit, bring healing to whoever is going through this. And it can happen to anyone just in case you're thinking, well, pastor, you don't know. <laughs> don't let me open up mine. Because I've been through it too. And that's why I can talk with confidence from the word of God and how I was delivered. People might be thinking, well, you know, it doesn't happen to pastors. <laughs> Let me shock you. Elijah in the Bible, who was he? He was a prophet, right? Do you know Elijah went through depression? Ooh, you don't know. Ooh. One of the symptoms that I'm going to read after it's like someone who's going through depression, sometimes they feel like killing themselves. Haven't you read in the Bible in 1 Kings when Elijah said, I am not better than my fathers? He said, oh Lord, kill me, take my life. Have you not read that in the scripture? So what is that? Is that not depression? <laughs> what about Jeremiah? Well, well, I'm going to go into all of those later, but I'm just trying to open your eyes to see that this attack of darkness and I'm going to show you the fact that these things are spirits from the Word of God and how you can deal with them. Let me read on. Let me read on. Anxiety disorder is affecting, listen to this, 40 million adults in the U.S. 40 million. That's huge. <laughs> That's 19% of the U.S. population. 40 million. It says from 18 and above anxiety disorder. I mean, it, this is serious. Some people are afraid, so afraid and so scared uh, of Monday. When Monday is coming, they are, they are already, by Sunday, they are already worried. By Friday, their joy will start. By Sunday morning, they are already worried. Oh Lord, I'm going to this job again. Anxiety. <laughs> he says, here, yeah, it's not uncommon for someone with an anxiety disorder to also suffer from depression or vice versa. So, we see these things and I'm going to show you a scripture I believe in Proverbs uh, Proverbs 12 where it talks about that is anxiety that causes depression. We're going to look at all that with time. Alright? It says here one in five youths from the age of 13 to 18 either currently or at some point during their life I've had a seriously uh, debilitating mental illness. This is serious. So just in case the young ones are thinking, well, you know, we are, it, it has gotten to the young ones too now. One out of five of people who are ages 13 to 18 are currently at that point. Let me read quickly because of time. People with anxiety disorder are six times more likely to be hospitalized for psychiatric disorder. People with anxiety disorder, six more times uh, likely to be hospitalized for psychiatric um, disorders. Hmm. Anxiety disorder include panic disorder, generalized I, I didn't even know the categories. Can you imagine? Social anxiety disorder. When I saw that, I was like, really? <laughs> you can't talk? No, it's a disorder. Oh, no wonder why we're growing up. Some people, they can't really talk. You know, they are shy and, and, you know, we didn't know. The young people, we we'll laugh at them those days. We we'll make fun of them. But you see, it's a disorder. They need help. 
I told you the story of that young man who, uh, the, 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 the place where I used to worship before. He couldn't talk to a lady. <laughs> Talking to a lady was a problem. He was of age. He should have been married. But he, he, he dare not open his mouth. But of course, nobody in the church saw that. They're like, oh, why can't you talk to a lady? No, he, it's a disorder. <laughs> it needs to be helped. Is somebody following me? They need to be helped. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, you know what? Um, this guy needs help. One day, I just believe the Holy Ghost just led me. I just called him. I said, come. I said, I sent somebody, go and call sister and so and so for me. When he heard sister and so and so, <laughs> pastor, pastor, <laughs> he was just laughing as if they were tickling him. I was like, what? <laughs> what is going on with you? I've not said anything. I only just asked them to call a sister and you're already laughing. See, this disorder, they come in different forms. Some people will just be over talking. They, they, all the, it's just nonsense. No, it's, it's a phobia. It's just saying rubbish out of the fear that's inside our anxiety. They come in different forms. And see, we need to understand these things and know how to address them, whether personally or people around us, with the Word of God. And some of the causes of these things include um, ACE, that they call Adverse Childhood Experience. It could be a traumatic experience. Are you understanding me? It's so important for us to understand. And that's why if you are raising your children, there comes a time, it's important for you to understand. Now, it's my own policy, my wife and I, but I will advise you to do the same thing. That certain people, you don't allow people to stay too long in your home. Lest they do something or the child pick something from that person. For example, I, well, I don't have any brother, any sister. I'm the only, <laughs> only one. But if I were to have, and they were going through something, or maybe say my cousin traveled from Africa down here, I would tell them, look, I'm happy you are here. I'm going to rent a place where you can stay here for the next one week, two weeks. By that time, I will have gotten a place. I will pay for the place. Why? My children are at the formative stage. I don't want any other influence to come on them. Is someone listening to what I'm saying? There are many stories, if you hear them, and some of them are affecting us till now. Are you understanding me? A friend of mine was telling me, here in the U.S., he said, my friend, he said, I will never allow any family member, anybody, stay in my home for even a day. I said, why? He said, my friend, you don't know what I went through. He said, my family, my, my, I think my dad or his mom went to bring their sister or some older cousin to the house. And this lady molested him as a young man. So, he, he couldn't talk, he couldn't go near a woman. He didn't know how to approach a woman. Nothing. So, I was, I was laughing, me, me and him were laughing one day. I said, so how do you talk to her? He said, my friend, he said, that one is God's grace. <laughs> how did it happen? The, the, the wife to be was dating his roommate. And the roommate was misbehaving. And he was the one that was encouraging the wife. From there, encouragement turned to manage. <laughs> I said, so what happened to your friend? He said, he was upset. He said, but where is he upset? I said, well, that's how God helped him. But you see, he told me, he said, that thing that happened, he said that affected him so bad that even the, the night of their honeymoon, it, it was still there. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Traumatic experience. Maybe some of us have it. I am believing that God is going to heal you in the name of Jesus. It could be a medical condition. It could start from maybe somebody is diagnosed for, you know, for cancer, for example. If you're not careful, depression can hit that person immediately. Because to that person, it could be death sentence. People hear of such disease now, they're like, whoa, this person is going to die. It could be a biological factor. <laughs> now, science, I was just laughing when I was doing the study. So, so now science is agreeing with us now. 
that there are things known as foundational problems. We call them foundation. We call them generational causes. We call them, they are now calling it biological. No, they are agreeing now that there is such thing as foundational or generational causes. Now, medical science there. The, the other day, we were checking. We said, okay, uh, we need you to go and do, you want to check the history of your father, of your grandfather. They want to go and check those things now. So they are agreeing with the scriptures that there are certain things that happen to your father, to your grandfather, to your uncles that will happen to you. It happened to Abraham. Same thing that happened to Abraham. Didn't it happen to Isaac? <laughs> and of course, I've shared with us over time many examples from the scriptures. Oh, David thought he married some wife. Uh, what happened to Solomon? His own, even tripled. Uh, are you understanding what I'm saying? Those things are there. Those demons that fought your grandfather, they have not died. They are waiting for you to come so that they can deal with you. Are, are you understanding me? It could be, uh, uh, you know, it could, the, 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 the um, mental illness could come out of issue of abuse of drugs and uh, loneliness and all that. But let me read something here as I move on. So what is anxiety? I'm not going to try to, you know, I'm just going to take from what the medical folks have told us. Anxiety is an intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. Anxiety is an intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. And you could see the symptoms. Some of the symptoms I have here are, you know, um, fast heart rate, rapid breathing, feeling tired, uh, trouble concentrating, sweating, you know, sweating of the palms. You know, when, when I was in high school, <laughs> very funny story, uh, there was a young lady, who, you know, um, who was my friend in high school. And um, <laughs> whenever it's time for exams, you know, we, we used to make fun of our doses, but now I see that it's anxiety. Whenever it's time for exams, she'll be sweating. You know, you sweat from your head, right? No, in our own case, her palms, she sweats so much the anki that she uses is so soaked because of the sweat anxiety of the exam and she will tell me please let, let me sit beside let me sit beside you she's saying now nah, please don't do this this is not right but this was in my high school days let me sit beside because she wants to spy and you know what was bad about it is why spying you know you would think okay if you are spying at least change some of the things I'm, I'm writing no she will write exactly the same thing I'm writing. So if I make a mistake and say, okay, Chris is going to the market. And I say, oh, I made a mistake. Maybe I spelled market. A-M-A-K-E-T. Uh, so, oh, I made a mistake. And I erase that market. And I write on that one. She will erase this. Oh, my God. What is this? <laughs> Are you understanding me? Now, you see, she had that phobia then. And so... These are some of the symptoms. Fear. Fear is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger accompanied with increased um, autonomic activity. Okay? Fear triggers, uh, let's say, an animal walks in here now. You know, <laughs> some people will forget themselves first. They will have, they will have escaped before they remember, ah, I, where, I have my children. <laughs> are you understanding me? For example, some people have phobia for snakes. If a snake shows up here, uh -huh, I know some people, are, they are already looking. Say, Pastor, don't even say that. <laughs> people will, will fly out of this place. Okay? So that's fear. And that, that is in every man. It's an emotion. It's in every man. Sometimes you first see something, you, 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 you understand. Some of us will sometimes when, and this has happened to me personally, if, if someone just starts to me all of a sudden, my hand will go first. It's still part of fear. <laughs> Trying to protect myself. <laughs> my hand will first must go, go first because I'm trying to protect my fear. You understand? So it comes in different forms. All right? Fear is a response to a perceived threat. Okay? Let me leave that alone. Let's go to depression. Depression, according to what they have told us from uh, CDC, says depression, also known as a major depression, major depressive disorder or clinical depression is a common but serious mood disorder. 
So when we're talking about depression, we're talking about a mood disorder. It says it causes severe symptoms that affects how a person feels, thinks, handles daily activities such as sleeping, eating, or walking. So we're talking about the mood here. And it's very important for us to understand. Some of the symptoms include persistent, sad, anxious, or empty mood. Feeling of hopelessness and pessimism. My God. Feeling of irritability, frustration, and restlessness. That boss that you have in the office, maybe th that person is experiencing depression. And they are frustrated, so they want to frustrate you also. Are, are, are you understanding me? That person that you're seeing, and you know what is funny? Some of these people, they drive on the road. Can you imagine? Somebody was telling me something. I was like, oh my God. Some of the, one of the ladies I prayed for on prophetic encounter and, and God healed her. She was telling me, she said, Pastor, I have, I have driven on the highway a number of times where I would just be driving and close my eyes. I was ready to end it. I said, you close your eyes driving? She said, yes. She said, I just want to hit the tree and just, what? Listen, if you know what people are going through, I'm telling you, as a pastor, I hear a lot of things. I, I said, you will close your eyes. And that's why when we say, let's give God thanks, let's appreciate him. Please thank him. You don't know what you have escaped today. Are you understanding me? And you know what is funny? That person that wants to kill themselves, most of the time, they will not die. Are you, are you agreeing with what I'm saying? They will know that it's a person that doesn't know anything, that has a family, that is getting ready to get married, that, that is ready to graduate, or something. That's a person. Innocent person. That will not die. Meanwhile, the one that is depressed, somehow, will not be alive. And that's why it's important for us to give God thanks. Sometimes the symptoms of this depression could be a loss of interest or pleasure in hobbies and activity. Increased anger and irritability. See, these things are symptoms. And when you start seeing these things, please pray. Let God lead you. Let God guide you to help that person. If you are the one facing that thing, please don't be quiet. By the grace of God, our doors are always open to listen to you here. We, we, are, we, can't, we are not judging anyone. A young man came one time um, to meet me and was telling me about something that happened and that the police were going to arrest him, how the lady that came, they had consent to do something down, the lady turned into rape. He was, he was just crying. He came to my house. And I counseled with him. I never judged him. Prayed for him, called him afterwards. And later I never saw him again. I will call him, he will not even keep it And I left him. I've never seen him since then. Why? Because I understand the pain. I understand this from the word of God and what God has asked us to do. See, if we do these things that I'm going to be sharing with us later on, I'm telling you, the world will be a better place. This is how you shine the light. He said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill. You are the salt of the earth. We are supposed to bring sweetness. We are supposed to bring light in this world that is dark. Young people are killing themselves in, 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 in high numbers. Can you imagine a young person, 13, saying they, they are depressed? What responsibility do you have that you are depressed? No. It's not about responsibility. It's about pressure. Now, everybody wants to look so beautiful. They want to have, if, they, if you don't, if you are not looking that way, if, if, if you are, if you are a, a little big, oh, you are ugly. So the world has already characterized you and has named you ugly. You must have our glass shape. If you don't have our glass shape, see, these are the things that we must deal with and we must encourage our young people and instill in them Christ and the love of God. So that when they go out there, anybody saying any nonsense, it will not penetrate. Let me go to the first scripture. I hope I can even finish this scripture we live today. Let's look at Matthew 6. Let's look at Jesus' response or what he said concerning this. Matthew 6. I will read 25. It's a long read, but I only just read 
three of the scriptures today. Matthew 25, Matthew 6, sorry. I'll read from verse 25, 26, 27. Matthew 25, I'll read 25, 20, Matthew 6, sorry, 25, 26, 27. Matthew 6, 25, 26, 27. It says, is it on the screen? Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, please pay attention to this. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not life more than meat and body more than raiment. Let me stop there. Let me go back again. It says, therefore, I say to you, take no thought. Now, if you look at the word closely, it says take. So, when you take something, it means you can also put it down. <laughs> it's an active word, right? When you take something, it means you can also do what? Put that thing down. And the next word it says is no thought. What it's saying there is to be anxious. Persistent worry. We do, I just talked about anxiety now. That's what he's talking about here. Fear. He says, take no thought. Take no persistent worry for your life. Oh, Jesus, does it, are, you, are you saying less, we shouldn't be worried or, uh, or concerned or don't think about our life? Because when you are talking about thoughts, you think, okay, maybe Jesus doesn't want us to think about the interview I'm going tomorrow. No, that's not what he's saying. He's talking about persistent worry. Of course, you will think about the interview. Of course, you prepare. Are you understanding me? Of course, you prepare for that exam. Of course, if you want to go and talk to a, a, a sister, if you are a brother, there will, there will be some level of worry or maybe concern. Don't, don't even say worry. Concern. But it doesn't mean <laughs> you should now overly kill yourself over that. No, no. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, take no thought to the point where you become anxious for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, <laughs> nor yet for your body what you put on. Some circles, there some kind of clothes that you put on, you can't be friends with them. If you, you're, if you have not bought clothes of a thousand something and you put on cologne of five thousand and ten thousand, your watch you buy, what's the name of those watch? Movado, or what's the name of those other watch? You, 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 can't, you can't be friends with the Rolex. You can't be friends with them. You come to a place, they look at the car you are driving, they, they, you are already X out. You can't be friends with them. <laughs> All kinds of things, go, even in high school, you can't be friends with them. They look at you and say, this one com coming from a poor home. You can't be friends with them. They labeled you what God has not labeled you. Jesus said, take no worry. They don't want to be your friend. Don't be their friend. Oh, they are the ones everybody likes in school. Uh-huh. And so what? Let everybody like them. You don't want, you mind your own business. At the place of work, everybody likes them. And so what? Your value is in Christ, not in people. The only person you are supposed to please is Christ, not people. Are, are you understanding me? So your value is not in any man's hands. It's in Christ. Said so Jesus said, do not take worry on these things. He said, is your life not more than meat? <laughs> he said, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Man, I like this one. The fowls of the air, they sow not for, neither do they reap, nor gather bands. Look at what he's saying. The Bible is saying, every two weeks, the birds are flying there. They don't collect paycheck. Do they? <laughs> Kobe, is somebody paying those birds that are flying? No. They don't get paychecks. They don't have businesses. They don't have a farm where they can go harvest. And the reason why Jesus was using these words, because those guys were involved in Nigerian farming those days. And so that's why I'm using the words you can understand now. Two weeks paycheck. Three weeks paycheck. One week paycheck. The birds don't have that. It now says, and yet 
your heavenly Father feedeth them. Your heavenly Father. Not the bird's heavenly Father. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I'm trying to bring out something here. Not the bird's heavenly Father. He's the one that created the birds, the fishes in the sea, yes, but he's not their heavenly Father. He's your heavenly Father. That's why Jesus made it. He says, and yet, your heavenly Father. Referring to the fact that you have a Father who loves and cares for you more than the birds, more than the fishes. He said, are you not much better than they? He said, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into his statue? Now, I'm going to talk about, not today, I'm going to talk about the heart and the mind. Because these two areas are where the enemy is attacking to bring about anxiety, fear, and depression. But not today. Next week, I'll do that. But I want to say this, talking about your Heavenly Father. God will only pay for what he has ordered. If you go to Chick-fil-A now and you say, I want uh, fries, I want, what is it? Chicken and chicken and what? What was one of the menu there? Spicy chicken, deluxe, or maybe, you know, <laughs> or salad, or one of those things. They are not going to say, okay, Dr. D, this is your bill, bill of hundred dollars. Won't you say, what do you mean hundred? What do you mean hundred dollars? What did I buy? <laughs> That's the first thing you are gonna ask. What is it? They say, oh no, we just added fifty dollar tip on the fifty. What? <laughs> no, you only pay for what you ordered, right? God will only pay for what He ordered. Let me give you an example from the scriptures. David had many wives, abundance of them. But he saw a particular woman. The Bible says when kings went to war, this time David did not go to war. He said, okay, let me just relax. That's why you see, relaxing is one of the dangerous moments in life. One of the dangerous moments at the time where you are overjoyed. Don't get so carried away with so much joy because you can do something that is stupid. Example, Herod, asking them to go chop up John the Baptist's head. Are, are you understanding me? A time where you are so depressed, you are so down. Don't make the, a serious decision at that point because you are going to make a stupid one. Are you understanding me? And so the, the, the time of relaxing too is a time where you have to be careful because that's when the enemy will show up because you are relaxed. Your guards are not up. And so he went and he saw this beautiful woman. He said, oh my God, I must have her. I mean, just take your eyes off and mind your business. No, I must have her. The devil has entered. The devil is walking. The time where he was relaxing. And after having her, that wasn't enough. He sent for his husband to be killed. And God was asking him. He said, if you are wanted more. Said, have I ever stopped you? If you are wanted more, you could have gone for more. I won't stop. Are you understanding me? And so God brought punishment into his lineage. Are you understanding me? God will only pay for what? What he ordered. He didn't order Uriah's wife. He didn't order for Uriah to be killed. God asked Abraham, he said, go and sacrifice your son, thy only son. Right? Isaac. And when Abraham was about physically, because in his heart, Abraham already killed that boy. When God was about killing, when Abraham was about sacrificing the boy, physically, the Bible said, and the Lord God, what did he do? He sent his angels. And he brought the lamb before him. Why would he bring that lamb? Because he was the one that ordered it. Do you guys understand now? It was because that's what God ordered. There are things that God has ordered concerning your life. And it's imperative for you to go find out what are those things. You cannot say, well, I can't marry a short man. Oh, I can't marry a short woman. 
what has God ordered concerning your life? That's what you must look for. Not the shortness. Not, oh, she's too fat. I was looking at one person one time. Said, are you not going to get married? You are over 50. What are you waiting for? Your chest, there's gray hair already. When are you going to... <laughs> when are you going to get married? This is 2024. Somebody just told me last week that I just got married. As at this time, he's probably 56, 57, or 58. So, which age are you going to now be running with people like Max and Max and, uh, and the rest of them? And Xavier. And be running up and down. Which waist? With the waist of an old man. By the time you get to, to 60, you, your child is just, the energy is just beginning. You are already tired. By the time you get to 70, that boy has not even, he, or baby is just about to start high school. You will not understand what he's telling you. Because your generation and their generation, they are so far apart. Are, are, are you understanding me? They are so far apart. So, if you are big, go and check. What has God said first? Before saying, this man, this man is too short, I can't marry this one. No. What kind of car is he driving? I can't. You go and look at his car. He's driving a jalopy that is farting every two seconds. No, I can't marry him. <laughs> and you say, I can't marry this one. No. My wife's friend was telling me, the one, you guys know him, Richie, that came here the last time. His wife was telling him, say, Pastor, he said, when your friend was coming those days, ah, the car that he was driving is, oh, Lord, my God, we have to. <laughs> Meanwhile, there were other men that were very rich that were coming to ask for a hand in marriage. And our friends would tell her, you can't marry this man. This man is a poor man. Go and look at this one. He's rich. He's doing well. And, and she said, there was something on. Say, I was tempted. Say, but there was something on my inside that was telling me, this is my husband. This is my husband. It's not about the car. It's not about the being tall or being short. It's about what God has ordered. A lot of us have missed the plan of God. We have missed out on what He has said concerning us because we are going to order extra that he has not ordered concerning you. What is his will? Some people cannot live in certain neighborhoods. They say, ah, you're living in that neighborhood, though. You are poor. You are not in my class. What has God ordered? Bible says in that Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, says, trust in the Lord with what? With all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Your understanding is limited. The Bible says in Psalm 37, say, delight thyself in the Lord, and he will do what? the desires of your heart. He will give you that desire. But you see, you must delight in him first. And when you delight in him, you will know his will. You will know his plans. He says, are you not better than the birds in the air? Just in case there's somebody here being afflicted with depression, I want you to know, I'm skipping a lot of things and I'm going to close here. I want you to know that God is interested in you. That's why he created you in his own image in the first place. God is interested in your case. That's why he said, no hair of yours will fall down to the... He said, the hair, your hair, he said they are numbered. He's not talking about the ones that are falling off. Even the ones that are still left, they are numbered. He knows. That's how much he cares for you. Know that you have a loving father. Know that you have a heavenly father who cares for you, who is interested in your case, who is interested in what you have to do on this earth. The Bible says in that John 1, 12, he said, for as many who have believed on him, to them he gave power to become what? The sons of God. You are a son of God. In a generic sense. So it's not about male or female. It's a generic word there. You are a son of God. I want to remind you today, you're going through pain, you're going through something that someone has done, you know, with regards to your feelings, emotions. Remember that God is madly in love with you. 
Remember that God is interested in your case. I'm telling you. I've been there before. I mean, somebody was telling me some time ago, many years ago, was said, oh, you see, you, you have wasted time in ministry. Say, time is not on your, age is not on your side. I blocked his number quickly. He was my mentor. I blocked his number. I said, this one, I can't talk to this one. This one will kill anything that will tell me that God is still in love with me. It's my, our paths are not the same. I'm not running a race with anybody. You are running a race to go and start churches. Good for you. I'm not running a race. In his time, he will do what he wants to do. In his time, he will blossom. And if he doesn't blossom, we'll be happy and go to heaven and enjoy ourselves. Who is counting? Age is not on your side. I block his number quickly. This one is the one that will allow depression to kill someone. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't allow any pressure to destroy you. Pressure from man, pressure from job, pressure from family members. Don't allow any of those to bring you to a place where you cannot experience the love of God again. No. For many years, I didn't have a, a mentor or a father that can talk. And I stayed away from them too because I didn't want trouble. Until recently, last year, the Lord brought a father, a father of fathers, he brought him into my life. I wasn't even searching. Even the ones I tried to go connect and search, everybody was behaving like they have a 2020 shoulder pad. They were kind of shoulder pad like this. And I left them alone. Yes. <laughs> yes. And now something happened. The ministry blows up now. They will now be calling me. Oh, but they will have forgotten that they were carrying shoulder pad. They have forgotten. The man of God was sharing with us. I was listening to him. He said he will send messages. He will send uh, WhatsApp messages to some of these big men of God. He said they will sit and they won't respond. He said, now God has, God has helped this young man. He's traveling everywhere now. He said, now they are, they are trying to call me. That, oh, we see, we see you. Really? Really? The young man came to me one time. He said, Pastor, so how are you doing this thing online? I sat him down. I explained everything that I'm doing to him. What? Look, we should look after one another. All this class and all this, you know, you are, you are, you are all this small, small, they don't know anything. All those nonsense need to stop because you don't know who God is going to lift up tomorrow. Are, are you understanding me? So, I want to encourage you. Be rest assured of the love of God for you. Whatever situation, whatever circumstance, whatever pain, always remember that you have a heavenly father who is interested in your case, who has not forgotten you, who has made plans for you. He said, I know the plans, the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of peace to bring you where? To an expected end. Always remember. And I also want to assure you that God has sent us to you. And God has sent other people that are here also to you. Always remember that. So let that encourage you. Let that stir you up. That there are people who truly care for you. Sometimes we might not tell you the kind of prayers that we are praying behind the scenes. But I guarantee you, somebody here is praying for you. Are you understanding me? And in the name of Jesus, you will not fail. In the name of Jesus, you will not falter. Rise up on your feet. In the name of Jesus, the enemy will not bring destruction to your home. In the name of Jesus, the devil will fail concerning your destiny. In the name of Jesus, concerning that issue with regards to relationship, you will not fail. You will not falter. In the name of Jesus, at the end of the day, you will be victorious. At the end of the day, you will win because Jesus already won. Because Jesus got the victory, you will experience victory also. Not just in the realm of the spirit, but physically in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we lift up our hands before him? Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. 
satisfy us in that area where we are experiencing pain can we ask him to satisfy us he's the only one that can satisfy that pain Shaboski Prembarosetia that depressive situation that anxiety he's the only one that can satisfy you Masike Perazida, money will not satisfy, friends will not satisfy, that job cannot satisfy, Amperos Kepia, that spouse of yours cannot satisfy. He is the only one that can satisfy us all. Can we ask him to satisfy us? Saimbosh Keparadia, can we ask him to overwhelm us with his love? Satisfy us with your joy. Mandu Satia, satisfy us with your peace. Be careful for nothing but by prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God. And the God of peace shall garrison your heart. One pay paida. Can we ask him to satisfy us with peace? He said, My peace have I given unto you, not as the world gives. Satisfy us with your peace, oh God. Satisfy us with your love. Man said, oh, you have said that you have loved us with an everlasting love. Man do se pe ke te ke te ba em preparo sai bano shata. Satisfy us all. Satisfy our soul. Satisfy us, oh God. And be fair escape to us. So that we might stand with boldness. As the Bible has said. Ah, that for two set here. The wicked one has when no man pursueth. But the righteous as bold as a lion. If no shantela prepare Satisfy us. So that we might stand against the walls of the enemy. So that we might stand against the cunningness of darkness so that we might stand and overcome the wicked one and his cause. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you that no one here will go back home with anxiety. No one here will go back home with fear of tomorrow. No one all here will go back with depression in your hearts. No. I pray that your love will overwhelm us. I pray that your love will overshadow us. Every one of us, including those who are online. Whenever the enemy is trying to remind us of failure, <laughs> success will hit. Victory will hit. Moving forward will hit. A turnaround will hit. In the name of Jesus Christ, instead of us failing, we will move from glory to glory. We will move from grace to grace. 
the doors will be open. Hey, there will be new grounds, new heights that we will conquer in the name of Jesus Christ. Anxiety is not our portion. Depression is not our portion. We will not be late because we have you, O oh Lord. Because you are the God of on time. We give you praise. We exalt your holy name. We worship you. Father, as we go into this new week, go before us. Go ahead of us. Go before us. Let us experience your rest. Let us experience your joy that is unspeakable. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let us remember what you have done for us in the past. How you have helped us to conquer and to come out of darkness. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.